Hello again, everyone. It's me, Matt. We're talking about something that has been the bane of my life as a Armored Crew Commander in Warrior, and I know many other people would join me in saying that the L94A1 chain gun is an absolute pile of garbage. And why are we talking about this today? Well, personally, I think it's a very interesting decision that the British Army has chosen to use this chain gun for the Ajax platform. And I know many of you are probably screaming at the screen saying, don't talk about Ajax, Matt. It's an awful platform. And we're going to do a video on the future, actually, about Ajax. I think it's time to revisit that topic. But today, we're really zeroing in on coaxial machine guns for the British Army. And when you think of coaxial machine guns mounted in armoured fighting vehicles, you'd expect reliability, ease of maintenance, and sustained firepower. Unfortunately, the British Army's L94A1 EX-34 chain gun fails in almost every one of these categories. But why is this weapon system so problematic, and why should it never have been used in the first place? Well, let me break it down a little bit for you today. But before I do, let me know what your favorite machine gun is out there. It doesn't have to be armored fighting vehicle mounted. It could be any machine gun that you particularly like. I personally love the, of course, GPMG or FN Mag 7.62mm machine gun in the Canadian Armed Forces, otherwise known as the C6. It is reliable, I love it to death, and personally, I would have wished it would just be mounted into British Armoured Fighting Vehicles back in the day when I was serving. Now, we have to talk a little bit about me serving with this platform because, of course, it has been extensively used across the British Army's fleet from Warrior, Scimitar, Challenger 2, and now, of course, Ajax. And it continues, for some reason, through its history. And I have operated the L94A1 extensively with the Warrior 512, 513, 510, and supported armorers, actually, in the Remi in trying to get this weapon system up and running again. And it is nothing but problems and a lot of people get very confused as to why a chain gun is called a chain gun a lot of people think that a chain gun is called a chain gun because the belt of chained bullets going into the gun this is not the case the chain gun is called a chain gun because it literally uses a chain to create a cam system to the bolt that rotates in the gun and brings new rounds to extract insert or pull from the belt that's being pulled into the machine gun and the l94a1 is certainly very very useful on paper but it's an electronically driven system and it causes a number of issues. So let's talk about the internals of this thing. It is electrically driven, a single barrel chain gun, meaning it relies on external power sources to the cyclic of the rounds instead of gas or recoil operation. Now, while in theory, this is really good on paper, in practice, it introduces some major points of failure. If the vehicle's electronic system fails or sustains damage, the gun is rendered completely inoperable. It has no manual interface. Unlike the tried and tested GPMG L7A2, which functions mechanically, the L94A1 is useless without that power. And trust me, there are many opportunities where you think, hmm, I wonder if I could get some power to this machine gun. Well, unfortunately, it's not the case. Cables get damaged, stepped on, trod on. The connections to those ports and the plugs also get damaged or shorted out. And quite often, even if you look after it perfectly, for some reason, electronic systems inside armor fighting vehicles just don't like working, and it is a pain in the butt. One of the biggest letdowns of the L94A1 was also its anemic rate of fire, a sluggish 520 rounds per minute. In comparison, the standard L7A2 GPMG used by the infantry and other vehicle mounts fires 900 rounds per minute and potentially more if you change the gas settings. One of the most baffling things about the L94A1 is that it was never originally designed for AFVs at all. It was actually developed as a helicopter mounted weapon, upside down. The EX-34 was created by Hughes Helicopters, now part of Northrop Grumman, and was intended for aerial platforms like the AH-64 Apache and other attack helicopters. Its electric driven system was meant to function with the aircraft's reliable power source, where weight and recoil were less of a concern. However, in a questionable procurement decision, the British Army decided to repurpose this weapon for their armoured vehicle fleets, despite its inherent weaknesses in a ground combat role. Unlike helicopters, where the gun could operate with fewer constraints, in AFEs, it became a maintenance and mechanical nightmare, with constant reliability issues. In basic principle, what was happening is that the chain gun that was normally mounted to the pylons or the underside of a helicopter was being flipped upside down and put inside of a crew fighting compartment as a coax machine gun for the tanks and armored fighting vehicles. However, the design of the chain gun inherently requires that the belt is felt from above, meaning that the feed of the 
links going into the chain gun is allowing a lot of support from the rounds being pushed from above instead of trying to drag the belt into the chain gun, which is exactly what happens with the chain gun mounted in AFVs. And it was an absolute nightmare, particularly when it was very dusty. Speaking of jamming though, this is where it really earns its bad reputation. The weapon has a notorious tendency to jam due to its timing and the way in which it's pre-positioned within its cyclic of where the round is either ejected, inserted, or extracted from the belt, the chamber, or from the ejection port. Often at the worst possible times, you would find that your chain gun would put about two rounds down range and then completely stop. And not just stop to a point where you could kind of do a clearance, but sometimes you would have what's called a hard extract, which means the rounds are stuck in the chamber and could basically make a pre-detonation and blow up in your face, so you'd have to let it cool down for a little while. Crews operating Challenger 2 tanks and warriors have been repeatedly complaining about how prone it is to stoppages requiring extensive clearing and the drills that take precious time in combat like I'd mentioned with the hard extract. Unlike the belt-fed L7A2 which would have been the perfect example to put inside the vehicle, it allows relatively easy clearing of stoppages and the chain system is also cumbersome and difficult to access inside the turret. If a jam occurs in the middle of a firefight, you cannot get very well into the actual working parts of the chain gun. In my vehicle, primarily that I use, the 512, at least you had a little bit better access. But for the crew commander that's uh, working right beside the gunner in the warrior, it's a little bit more difficult. And for the Challenger 2 loader, of course, running parallel to that 120mm gun, there isn't much room at the front portion of the turret to get access to the chain gun. And in terms of maintenance, it was also a bit of a nightmare. Armourers and vehicle crews alike have long complained about the L94A1's complicated maintenance requirements like its timing and even just putting it back together. While traditional machine guns can be stripped and cleaned quite easily in the field, the X-34 requires specialised knowledge and more downtime to service. Armourers did not enjoy if you brought it to them saying, yeah, this just doesn't work very well, it's not timed correctly to the chain. They would hate you because they knew they were in for a bit of a nightmare trying to get this thing back together and set back into a position where it could fire. In high stress combat environments where vehicle uptime is critical, this was unacceptable. And even Afghanistan where I had my chain gun, just a little bit of dust got into that chain gun, which in Afghanistan all the sand is literally like baby powder, there was no way of stopping it. And even worse, to pull that belt into the chain gun was just causing nothing but stoppages. And doesn't matter how much you tried looking after it, just didn't want to work for you. In contrast, the L7A2 GPMG was field strippable in about a minute, making it far more practical for frontline use. And although the stripping of the chain gun wasn't too bad, putting it back together, if not everything lined up absolutely perfectly, would just fight you. So if it's such a poor weapon, why was it adopted? Well, it comes down to 90s era UK military procurement decisions. The British Army chose the L94A1 during a time when electric guns were being pushed as the, quote, future of AFV weaponry. In hindsight, it was a terrible decision, and one that has continued to plague vehicle crews ever since, and strangely still being pushed into modern AFVs like Ajax of today. I am still shocked that chain guns are the priority of machine guns being placed into the fleets of the British Army and even some of the fleets out there today. I'm not saying all chain guns are bad. Modern day chain guns are very good, in fact. Bushmaster has really mastered the art of setting up chain guns, but these are heavier duty platforms that have a better, more robust system. But the L94A1 is certainly not robust. At the end of the day, I think it's a bit of a failed experiment that should have been replaced long ago. The British Army already had a superior weapon system that could easily be modified with the L7A2 GPMG, which is far more reliable, easier to maintain, and much more effective for vehicle-mounted combat. But a lot of people say, well, Matt, it's going to be difficult for you to change a barrel on an L7A2 than you would with the chain gun, and this is another reason as to why they didn't select it, is because the chain gun, you could actually remove the barrels internally to the vehicle, whereas the L7A2 would be quite challenging to actually get the barrel removed from the machine gun, because you'd have to basically pull the barrel out of the front, which you can't do. But the pulling of the barrel out of the internal side of a vehicle is also extremely dangerous. It's red hot. We had a number of crew members burnt trying to extract a red hot barrel using the, you know, kind of Kevlar gloves or the asbestos gloves as we called them. And it was really, really dangerous if you had a mix match of barrels. Barrels are serialized to each chain gun. And if by some chance a crew member had accidentally put the wrong barrel into the mating and the timing of the other chain gun, it could create a catastrophic failure. 
And for the cherry on top of this debacle, another massive issue for the L94A1 was its ammunition inefficiency. Unlike conventional machine guns, it has a tendency to double cycle, meaning that sometimes, extremely rarely, it ejects a unfired round with every shot fired and puts it into the ejection port where the brass is fired out the front of the vehicle. This is a ridiculous flaw for a weapon that was meant to be used in prolonged combat, leading to unnecessary ammo wastage and potential for it to cook off in the extraction barrel, which is basically the port which pushes out the brass to the front of the vehicle, which is really, really cool when you see it happening, seeing brass fly everywhere, particularly if you're an infantry section working alongside the vehicle and uh, brass is kind of raining upon you when you're firing blanks or even live. But it's an unforgivable trait in the logistics of a strained combat battle condition where your ammunition is being wasted or even potentially exploding on this weapon system when it's ejecting those unfired rounds. And it's pretty scary stuff knowing that you could have a catastrophic failure of ammunition, particularly a 7.62mm round in your chain gun. And I never had any significant failures within my chain gun. I had a few hard to extracts, which basically means you have to let the you know, chain gun cool down and cyclic the weapon system back round to extract the round manually. And you had kind of a key lock system on the back of the timing system that showed you where the chain gun was in its cyclic and then you would rotate it to extract. But it was terrifying when you're using that little kind of Allen wrench to try and get that round out of there. And it's basically a cover that you open up to look inside of there and hope that the round doesn't cook off in your face. And it was just really not a good coaxial machine gun. And Personally, I really do think the British Army made quite a mistake picking it. I know many of you out there that have used this and maybe watching this video are saying, well, I absolutely had no issues with it, and Matt, you were just terrible at maintaining the L94A1 X34. I would disagree. I know so many people that absolutely despised this weapon system, whether they were, you know, Challenger 2 crew members, Warrior crew members, and even now the new Ajax platform, they've had nothing but nightmares with it, and it just needs to go. I need to go back to a machine gun platform. But what do you think? Have you had experience with this particular chain gun? Let me know in the comments section. Of course, if you did enjoy today's video, leave me a like and of course subscribe. And I appreciate you all for supporting my channel, particularly those recently who have been supporting me financially. Really means a lot to me. Thank you so much. And if you wish to, go check out my description box below for my Patreon and my PayPal. And thank you for those who have been giving me also financial support on the Super Chats or I guess thanks chats, which are basically kind of a comment donation. It really means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day, everyone. All the best. Bye-bye.